I want to talk to you about what is the reality of sihr. Why does it occur? Sihr is very easy to understand if you understand the psychology and the physical differences that men have from jinn. Because sihr is the overlap between the world of men and the world of jinn. Jinn, as we know, are created from, the Arabic calls that a smokeless fire. If you want to be technical, we can call it a type of energy. So the jinn has potential to go at the speed of light, essentially. The jinn has the potential to go through physical barriers because the jinn is not material. The jinn is not flesh and blood. The jinn is not matter. The jinn is energy. So the jinn can go through material at the speed of light. And the jinn, because it doesn't have a form, a lot of people say, what does a jinn look like? What does a ghost look like? What does it look like? And the response is, it doesn't look like anything. It can take on any shape. It's not a physical matter. It can take any shape it wants to and be a man, it be a dog, be anything. It doesn't have a particular shape. So the jinn has the physical power to be much faster than man and to go through physical barriers because it's energy. Like we have the waves of the telephone come through the walls of the masjid. So too the jinn can go through and come out, not a problem. Additionally, the jinn, very interestingly enough, and we learned this from the story of Sulaiman, it has a very, very amazing power. We learned that the jinn even has the power to transform matter into energy and to take that energy from one place to another and retransform it back into matter. E equals mc squared can be proven in its own way. According to the story of Sulaiman, the jinn went from Jerusalem to Yemen promised to do this. I can bring the throne back to you before you stand up. The throne would have been bigger than this podium behind us, bigger than this stage. It's a throne that was magnificent. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَهَا عَرْشٌ عَظِيمٌ The jinn said, I'll bring it back for you by the time you stand up and you'll have it in front of you. And the throne would have come, I mean, you're not going to see the chair flying in the sky. The jinn would have taken the throne and somehow, in a way that Allah knows best, take it in its hidden energy form and then bring it all the way to Jerusalem and then retransform it back into the throne. The jinn had the capacity to do that. The facts that all all of the jinn, only one stood up. It kind of sort of shows this is the pinnacle of what a jinn can do. This isn't your average run of the mill jinn. This isn't the jinn living in Dallas or, or Houston or California. This is one of the most strongest jinns of the entire world, if not the strongest, telling Sulaiman, I can do that. But the concept is there. The jinn can go super fast speed and the jinn can go through objects. And therefore, when a jinn is able to tell you something that's happening in another part of the world, what's so surprising? Imagine if you had a cell phone and you're speaking to somebody on the other side of the world and the guy tells you what's happening as he describes it. Would you be surprised? No. Similarly, if the jinn is able to just go and tell you there's a hidden treasure over there, why is that surprising? The jinn lives for a thousand years, maybe on average or longer than that. Jinns live much longer than men. And so if some man buries a treasure in the middle of the desert, some jinn knows about it, and they'll tell the word, oh, there's a treasure over there. And when it's handy, a jinn is going to say, oh, there's treasure buried over there. He's going to say it to his magician or whatnot, and eventually they will find it. So the jinns have capabilities we do not have. They are faster than men. They are more powerful than men. The average jinn is more powerful than the average man. Again, that doesn't mean they're super powerful. That doesn't mean they're infinitely powerful. Only Allah Azza wa Jal is infinitely powerful.